Today's Namaste Yoga continues our gratitude series with gratitude and thought. Welcome to episode 291 of Namaste Yoga. Today we are filming on the gorge and I am taking a break from my day of silence to film this for you. <laughs> Tim's parents just left this morning at four in the morning and I gotta say <laughs> we had a good visit and we had a really good visit and we went to Tofino and we filmed seven classes for our members in Tofino and and we had lots of fun and they didn't understand what a day of silence was <laughs> so i'm i'm having a day of silence today except for filming for you <laughs> so today you're going to need um your mat your strap two blocks and a bolster so thank you to Dusky Leaf for my props. And just to clarify, because I know some there's been some questions about this, Dusky Leaf delivers both in Canada and the US. So if you go to duskyleaf.ca, you can get the Canadian prices. And if you go to duskyleaf.com, you can get the American prices and you can get all these amazing props delivered to you in the US as well. And the reason why I love the round bolsters, I actually worked very closely with John in the creation of this bolster because one of my pet peeves about the round bolsters in particular is that they flatten out over time. And I, I think there should be a real distinction between the round and the flat bolsters. The flat bolsters need to stay put and then the round bolsters need to create that rounded shape in your body for side bends and back bends. And so when uh, John was creating these, and uh, I worked really closely with them with the prototypes to make sure that they held their shape and they really do. So this is really great high quality bolster. And the other thing that I love about it compared to um, a lot of the other bolsters on the market is that there are two uh, handles and this may seem like a maybe a small thing but when you go to do your yoga practice and you go to grab your bolster if the side with the handle isn't close to you it seems inevitably it's like what do they call that Darwin no Murphy's law yeah the side with the with the handle without the handle is not by you when you go to grab it and then it's very difficult to get it to you in your practice and if you're going into a restorative pose the last thing you want to do is kind of come out of that meditative state to to pull your bolster towards you so that is a really another really amazing feature of this and we've been really hard on these bolsters I don't know if you can imagine because we travel with them and we film outside with them and they they go through the most rough conditions I think with us and they're really high quality and very well made. I can't say enough good things about them. And, th and the covers come off and they get washed and they do get washed with us because <laughs> they just get in really dirty conditions with us <laughs> because we're filming outside all the time. I don't think anybody's harder on their props and, uh, than I am. Also, thank you to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes today. I'm wearing a long sleeve teal bamboo top with love on the front of it and long gray leggings with the om mani padme om on the leg and i'm also working with donna right now on a new design for a top because i've been drawing mandalas some of you have probably seen that if you follow me on instagram and on facebook that i've been uh dabbling in art <laughs> So uh, Donna's been kind of excited about that and she wants me to design some, 
I don't know, do some designs for squeeze clothes too. So that's kind of that's kind of exciting, and uh, that's something we're working on together because designs on paper are different than designs you put on tops, right? You like what a screen. What works as a screen print is different than you know you can put pretty much anything on paper depending on what medium you use but what you put on a shirt is different so we're working on that together right now so we also have a testimonial today our testimonial comes from speak pipe today and it was she never said her name so hi melissa thank you so much for your weekly yoga lessons i appreciate your generosity your way of explaining the postures is really wonderful. All the respites in between are also very useful. Very often I listen to a part of the lesson before I go to sleep and it contributes to calming down my soul. I wish you and also everybody listening a wonderful time in the summer now. Bye bye. Thank you so much for your kind testimonial and for your wishes for everybody. I love when you leave your testimonials on SpeakPipe so that I can hear your beautiful voices right from my website. Okay, so let's get started with our movements for today. We're going to start lying on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. We're going to begin with some neck and shoulder and hip releases. These are great to lubricate your joints. Really good if you have arthritis in your shoulders, hips neck. Uh, also good to release your shoulders, uh, neck and hips. So knees bent, feet flat on the floor and you can leave your hands down by the side of your body and we're just going to begin by rolling your head from side to side. Breathe in in the center, breathe out, roll your head to the side and go nice and slow. Okay, now bring your head back to the center, hold on to your elbows, breathe in in the center, breathe out, roll your head and elbows to the right side, breathe in in the center, breathe out, roll your head and elbows to the left side, roll your head with your elbows. And then keep your head in the center and just lower your elbows from side to side as you breathe out. Breathe your elbows in the center. Breathe out, lower your elbows to the side. Great release for your shoulders and your neck.
And then come back to the center and you're going to roll your elbows one way and your head the other way. Breathe into the center. Breathe out, roll your elbows one way and your head the opposite way. Then come back to the center and we'll keep lubricating your joints and releasing your shoulders by circling your elbows down to your belly and then up and overhead. And then circle the other way. Come back to the center and you're going to lower your elbows and your head to the right and sway your knees to your left so that you're releasing your hip joints as well. Come back to the center, sway your head and elbows to the left and your knees to the right so you're releasing your hip joints and your elbows and your neck. And then come back to the center, bring your hands down by the side of your body and just check in and feel, and maybe even lengthen your legs out if you don't have any back problems and feel the difference between your shoulders and your hips from the beginning of the class and just see if they feel closer to the ground, more released and more relaxed. Maybe even check in with your jaw, see if that feels more released as well. And then you're going to take your strap and you're going to place it around the ball of your right foot and if you have any back problems you're going to bend your left knee and you're going to draw your left leg straight up this can be really good if you have and some this can be really helpful for some types of back problems it's also good for arthritis in your hip and your knees it's going to be really good preparation for some poses we have some standing postures we have coming up later on if you don't have any back problems, you can lengthen your left leg out. Helps to also stretch out your hamstrings and your calves. And keep your shoulders heavy and relaxed on the ground.
Then you can release your right leg down and bend your left leg in. Place the strap around the ball of your left foot. Draw your left leg straight up and feel a stretch in the back of your left leg all the way down through your hamstring and your calf. Breathing into your belly. And then you can release your left leg down and put your strap off to the side. You're going to cross the top of your right ankle over the top of your left thigh and then draw your right leg in. Reach through your keyhole. Hold on the back of your left thigh. Use your right elbow to open your right knee out to the side until you feel sensation in your right glute in your outer thigh. And then slowly lower down and we'll switch sides so that you cross the top of your left ankle over your right quadricep and then reach through that keyhole again. Hold on in the back of your right leg. Use your left elbow to open up your left leg. And draw your leg in until you feel sensation in your left buttocks and into your outer left thigh. Breathing into your lower belly. And you can release your legs down, bend your knees, keep your knees bent and roll to your right side. We're going to come up to seated and you're going to sit in a comfortable position to receive the teachings for today. We're going to talk about gratitude in thought. Okay. So I am going to sit kneeling on a block. You can sit kneeling on a block like me, or you can sit cross-legged on a meditation cushion, or you can sit on a chair, whatever works best for you today. We're going to do the Anjali Mudra today. This is also known as reverence to the heart seal, the Atmanjali Mudra, which is Atman means self. It's derived variously from to breathe, to move, or to bow, and it's a reverence to your self seal. So I thought it was a good one to use for today's class on gratitude and thought. It reduces stress and anxiety, it calms your brain, it creates flexibility in your hands and your fingers, your wrists and your arms, especially when you do it to your heart center, although we're not going to do it there today. It opens up your heart, strengthens your back, 
Most of all, I chose it because it quiets your mind. So the way we're going to do it today is the Anjali Mudra. And then you're going to spread your fingers and your thumbs. And you're going to place your thumbs at your third eye. So I really want you to focus, because we're doing gratitude and thought today, I really want you to focus on quietening your mind. So that's going to be the focus for today. And you're going to stay here while I share with you the teachings for today. So this will be a good focus for you for today. You're going to have to meditate like this later because I wish I could stay with you here. And most of these teachings today were have been inspired by Jack Cornfield teachings. Jack Cornfield is one of my favorite spiritual teachers. He's just such a gentle, beautiful soul. And so um, I definitely, uh, they were inspired and, and mostly taken from his teachings. And I want to thank my good friend, Shar. She was definitely my research assistant for today. <laughs> Actually, probably for the next three classes. She really helped me out for this. I told her I wanted to do um, the next three, three weeks. We're going to do gratitude and thought, word, and action. So this is the first thought. Next week is going to be gratitude and word and gratitude and action. And she, I told her my favorite teachers, and then she went out and and looked for, she went out and found, found things for me. <laughs> She's really good at it too. <laughs> I guess you gotta make her my permanent research assistant actually. <laughs> it's nice because she lives so close so we can talk really easily too. So, and she, lis she likes Jack Cornfield too. She li we like the same teachers. We listen to the same teachers and read from the same teachers a lot too. So I think it was probably fairly easy for her to go and and find them. So really appreciate Char's help with these uh, teachings, with sharing these teachings today. So Jack Cornfield points out that it can be quite normal, and I really want to point out the normalcy of this, to be overcome with regular repeated destructive thoughts of self-judgment, criticism, shame, and unworthiness. Especially when we regularly practice, do practices such as yoga and meditation. So when you do quiet your thoughts and drop inwards and turn off the noise of the external world, it's, you might be surprised how much self-criticism, judgment, and unworthiness comes up. It's just, it's normal. That's the internal landscape. And I think when you go back to the Inner Critic series, we spent a lot of time with the first two classes, we spent a lot of time of bringing awareness, friendliness, and acceptance to those things. So I don't want to just gloss over that. It's really important that you do bring loving kindness, awareness, and acceptance to that part of our internal landscape. So I'm not saying that we should just suppress them or gloss over or move past. I spent a lot of time journaling um, and that's how I bring acceptance to that part of myself. Um, every day I write in my journal and, and I bring acceptance and compassion and loving kindness to, to the part of myself that feels unworthy, that feels self-critical and that feels um, negative and and that part of yourself needs a voice I'm not saying we should suppress it because here comes the next part of the class <laughs> so chapter 2 verse 33 and 34 of the Yoga Sutra says when presented with disquieting thoughts or feelings cultivate the opposite an elevated attitude the desire to act upon unwholesome thoughts or actions or to cause or condone others towards these thoughts or actions is preventable. So the thing is, it's quite normal to have these negative thoughts and feelings of, of unworthiness and self-destructive thoughts, but the, the Yoga Sutras teach that we really shouldn't stay there. And so by giving those thoughts and feelings a voice and expression, bringing acceptance to them and and compassion and awareness then we can cultivate the opposite and that's that's what uh, the yoga sutras are saying them 
So one of the ways that we can cultivate the opposite thought is through gratitude. Cultivating gratitude can be an antidote that can transform your unhealthy, destructive, negative thoughts. It's a way to change the channel. So you'll remember that from the Inner Critic series as well, that technique of changing the channel. The new phases of gratitude can be the healthy, the new phrases of gratitude can be the healthy and simple phrases. Jack Kornfield says that gratitude is a gracious acknowledgement of all that sustains us, a bow to our blessings, great and small, an appreciation of the moments of good fortune that sustain our life every day. So continue to sit with ease and dignity in your body with this beautiful Anjali Mudra here at your third eye, bringing focus and calm and ease to your mind. Allow yourself to be comfortable, open, and breathe with ease into your heart. Let your gratitude begin with yourself. And acknowledge that all these years, you have cared for your own life. Now begin to expand your circle of gratitude outwards and acknowledge all that has supported you in your own care. And these are all the words of Jack Kornfield. Jack Kornfield is a wordsmith, he's just a beautiful wordsmith. He says, with gratitude I remember the people, animals, plants, insects, creatures of the sky and sea, air and water, fire and earth, all whose joyful exertion blesses my life every day. Take a deep breath. With gratitude, I remember the care and labor of a thousand generations of elders and ancestors who came before me. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Let it fall out of your mouth. And I just want to acknowledge the call of the raven right now. The raven is the way that my ancestors have been speaking to me lately. <laughs> and just raven, I think is really, inter you know, really, uh, synchronistic that right before we went into this gratitude prayer that raven started going really loud really beautiful I offer my gratitude for the safety and well-being I have been given take a deep breath in I offer my gratitude for the blessings of this earth I have been given. Take a falling out breath. I offer my gratitude for the measure of health I have been given. I offer my gratitude for the family and friends I have been given. I offer my gratitude for the community I've been given. I 
I offer my gratitude for the teachings and lessons I have been given. I offer my gratitude for the life I have been given. Reflect on how these teachings touch you in your life right now. And form an intention of what you would like to receive from this class today. What are you creating, sustaining, releasing or rebirthing in your life right now? And how can your yoga practice help you do that? So from here you can release the Anjali Mudra from your third eye and we'll make our way up to standing. So let's do that through Adho Mukhswanasan, downward facing dog. Come on to all fours, spread your fingers nice and wide. Hands underneath your shoulders, knees underneath your hips. Tuck your toes under, inhale here. Exhale, lift your hips. And then walk your feet into your hands. And slowly roll up to standing. Okay, from standing we're going to do Garudasana. And this is Eagle's Pose. It's a great pose to work on balance. It's a great pose for all the joints in your body. And we're going to do it today because Garud means to devour. We're going to use it to devour all those unhealthy negative thoughts and replace them with thoughts of gratitude. So start by standing on your left foot. Sink, bend your knee, cross your right leg over and you can either keep your right foot on the ground. It'd be a good idea to have a chair or a wall to help you with balance if you want help with balance. It's a great pose to increase your balance. Um, so you can keep your toes on the ground. You can place it on the outside edge of your leg or you can cross your foot and hook it all the way around. Bring your left arm up, hook your right arm underneath and maybe your palms come together or back of the hands or elbows and palms together. So do what works for you today in your body. And then you can go ahead and release this from your body. We did have an eagle fly overhead. I heard it. <laughs> yeah. Lots of eagles here. We have, what do, do we have, what, 25% of the world's population of eagles here in BC? Is that right? 25% of BC's eagles are on this island. Oh, 25% of BC's eagles are on our island. Okay. <laughs> Slightly wrong with that statistic. <laughs> okay, let's do the other side. This pose is great to build strength in your legs and uh, also in your ankles. So bend your right leg, cross your left leg over your right leg. Your toes can go on the ground or on the outside of your leg, or depending on the flexibility of your hips, you can cross your leg all the way over. Bring your right arm up, hook your left arm underneath it. It's also fantastic for flexibility in your shoulders. It's just great for pretty much every joint in your body. And good for focus too. That's why I chose it today because we're focusing our mind, focusing our thoughts.
then release. We're going to do warrior three pose with eagle's arms. So this one can be a little more challenging for balance or, and you could, uh, you could use a wall, you could use a chair, you could do the arms, not do the arms, you can have your arms out to the side. So do what works for you and your body today. What you're going to do is bring your left arm up and hook your right arm underneath it so that you're doing eagle's arms or you can do backs of your palms together or you can do elbows together and palms together and then stand on your left leg and you're going to tip forward until your torso and your leg come parallel to the ground. So this is warrior three with eagle's arms for that real focus here. Great pose for balance, flexibility in your left hip, strength in your left leg, core strength, back strength. And release this pose out of your body and we'll do this on the other side. So this time you'll stand on your right leg, bring your right arm up, hook your left arm underneath. So try, maybe try a different variation, arm position, hand position, leg position. <laughs> um, okay, and you're gonna hinge forward through your right hip, bringing your torso parallel to the ground, your back leg parallel to the ground. I just want to find, <laughs> oh, when you're outside, you got to find, it's nice if underfoot is somewhat level. Then you can make your way back up to standing. Okay. So, that was great to focus and clear your mind, balance, flexibility, and strength in your legs and your ankles. We're going to come to Adho Mukhswanasana again, downward facing dog, just to calm your mind. And then we'll come into the supported shoulder stand also to calm your mind. So let's come up towards uh, the front of your mat. Take a big deep breath in. Exhale and hinge forward through your hips. Hands on either side of your feet and take a big step back into a homuksunasan. Just let your head hang here. You could also do the standing against the wall with your hands against the wall or your hands against a chair. And just let this really release your neck and allow it to calm your mind. And then you can slowly lower down. And we're going to do supported shoulder stand. Also another great one to calm your mind. And then the intention is that the more calm your mind is, the easier it is for you to have uh, more grateful thoughts. So we're going to use your block for this. I guess you could use your bolster for it as well. And you're going to bend your knees. Place your feet flat on the floor, press into your feet, place the block underneath your sacrum, your pelvis, and lift your uh, feet into the air. 
You could even use the Anjali Mudra with your thumbs at your third eye here again. And then you can slowly lower down, press into your feet, and roll to your side. We're going to do a back bend now. So I'm going to actually give you two options for that because I've got you having your bolster here so we can use it. Okay, so it's really nice to use your props to support you in back bends. We're going to do sphinx pose here. I'm going to suggest you use your bolster in sphinx pose. So if you place it underneath your chest here, you can use it um, to lift your chest and it's really nice supported here. We're gonna, we were gonna do Sphinx pose with the Anjali Mudra here. But actually with this bolster, I don't really like it because it's bending your spine forward again. So I'm just going to use my forearms on the ground and the bolster here because then it keeps the natural curve of your spine bending backwards. So I'm glad we used that mudra in shoulder stand instead. <laughs> so this is a great one to strengthen your spine, stretch your chest and your lungs and your shoulders and your abdomen. It helps to relieve stress. It's a great counter pose to all the time you spend rounded over your computers your iPads, your tablets, your cell phones, driving, eating. So it bends your spine in the opposite direction to what it's usually bent in. So I have a little tip for you here, actually. This is an off the mat tip. See how I have my Kindle here? This is one of those handheld devices I'm talking to you about. <laughs> the iPads and, and uh, are about that size too. So see, if you're gonna spend your time on your iPad or your, or your Kindle or your Kobo or your tablet or kuzus or whatever they're called <laughs> you can get your bolster out put it underneath your chest like this lie down on lie down on your mat and spend your 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it's going to be on social media and do it this way okay at least you're going to be getting some good movement in your spine that way some strengthening in your back and your opening of your chest okay little pro tip <laughs> opening of your psoas your organs are going to be happy but, yeah but build up to it don't start with 20 minutes or else you're going to call me and you're going to be like my neck's in pain my back's in pain everything hurts so start two minutes three minutes four minutes five minutes but you get the drift but you could build up to 20 minutes. Shouldn't be on social media any longer than that. <laughs> but you could read here too. Get off the couch. Okay, I'll come off the soapbox, otherwise known as the bolster. 
think that was a good amount of time there. And push up onto all fours. Draw your knees up underneath you. Come into child's pose here. Okay, then slowly roll up through your spine. Bring your feet out in front of you. And slide your right leg in. Cross your right leg over your left leg. Bend your left leg in. Wrap your left arm around your right leg. And turn towards it. This is great for your spine, which houses your central nervous system. So by stretching all the muscles, little tiny muscles around your spine, it really helps to calm your central nervous system. So another really good one for your hip joints. Then come back to the center, slide your legs out, bend your left leg in, cross your left leg over your right leg, bend your right leg in. Lift up tall through your spine, wrap your right arm around your left leg and turn towards it. And then come back to the center. Bring the soles of your feet together. Open your knees in a V shape. You're going to fill the space here. I feel like I ended last week's class the same way I might have. But <laughs> and you're going... I know. That <laughs> Tim says because it was good. It's true. Um, you're going to fill the space so that you s support your SI joints, which I think I talked about last week as well. And you're going to use your bolster here. And you're going to fold forward so that you support yourself on your bolster. It's great for your hip joints. Stretches out your shoulders, especially if you reach your arms underneath. And you can pull your hands away with your shoulders, uh, with your feet. Gives a nice stretch through your shoulders. I chose it to this week because it really, um, it's tortoise pose, really turns you inward and allows you to calm your mind. And then you're going to slowly make your way up to seated. And we're going to come down for Shavasana to allow yourself to receive your class, your practice. So you're going to lie down on your back. And I would encourage you to place the bolster underneath your knees here. So you have a nice, lovely flow of energy through your body.
And you're going to stay here and I'm going to come up to seated. And I have uh, an excerpt from one of Jack Cornfield's books to read to you today while you're resting in Shavasana. So this is an excerpt from Jack Cornfield's book, Bringing Home the Dharma, Awakening Right Where You Are. And I chose it because I think it speaks to this idea, you know, we talked about, uh, today's class was about gratitude and thought, and we talked about changing a negative thought to a thought of gratitude. And I think this reading um, speaks to it in a very important way. So Jack Kornfield says, another quality of spiritual maturity is kindness. It is based on a fundamental sense of self-acceptance rather than guilt, blame, or shame for the ignorant acts we have committed or the fears we have committed. It is all too easy to turn spirituality and religion into what Alan Watts calls a grim duty. Poet Mary Oliver writes in one of her poems that we do not have to walk on our knees repenting. Our great spiritual task is not the perfection of ourselves, but the perfection of our kindness towards ourselves and others. In deep self-acceptance grows a compassionate understanding. As one Zen master said when asked if he ever gets angry, of course I get angry, but when a few minutes later I say to myself, what's the use of this, and I let it go. This self-acceptance is at least half, at least half of our spiritual practice. We are asked to touch with mercy the parts of ourselves that we have denied, cut off, or isolated. So I want to say that again because I'm not asking you to deny, cut off, or isolate the thoughts that are are negative. We are asked to touch with mercy the parts of ourselves that we have denied, cut off, or isolated. Mature spirituality is a reflection of our deep gratitude and a capacity for forgiveness. Mature spirituality is a reflection of our deep gratitude and a capacity for forgiveness. So gradually allow your breath to deepen. So they wiggle and stretch out. Bend your knees and roll to your right side and pause there and take a breath. And just take a moment and notice how you've been transformed by this class, by these teachings, by your yoga practice, as you are being rebirthed and coming out of this class from the fetal position. And then slowly make your way up to seated. So I want to thank you so much for joining us for episode 291 of Namaste Yoga. We so appreciate you being with us. If you like today's show, we would love it if you could click that like button. If you're new to Namaste Yoga and you want to make sure that these classes show up in your feed, then definitely subscribe to our channel. And if you know somebody, it's raining now. <laughs> if you know somebody who might, this has been a funny, funny filming. <laughs> uh, 
if you know somebody who would like to receive teachings like this, then definitely share Namaste Yoga with them or maybe even this class if you think it would resonate with them. And if you are receiving value from these teachings or if this class particularly resonated with you, then you can donate. Or you can also add value by leaving your comments below. And I have a particular uh, question for you to leave in the comments below. So what is one phrase of gratitude that you are offering today? So finish this sentence. I offer my gratitude for... You can finish that sentence. And then if you would like the latest research and most innovative teaching to help you to go deeper with gratitude and thought, then I have more to offer you. We have an introduction to meditation series in our membership community that gives you all the basics to get started on meditation. It teaches you how to sit. It teaches you how to be with your thoughts. It teaches you how to be with your body and... Um, what else does it teach you? It teaches you how to be with your body, different sitting op options, sensations in your body, how to be with your breath, how to be with your thoughts. And it also has a candle gazing meditation. And then once you've been through that, we also have a meditation group on our in our membership community and each week there's a focus for your meditation and that group really supports each other in their meditation practice so we'd love to have you as a member of our membership community where we will support you daily in your practice with loads of videos an online community and just lots of different things that will support you daily in your practice there so if you have any questions about that you can always email me i'm happy to answer those questions I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our oceans. May you be as rooted as the trees in our forest and may you be as strong as our mountains. Om Shanti, Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.